Howdy y'all, Twitchonium back with you again. Today we're going to do another March of the Machine quick draft, as we have been doing for a while. Such a fun format though, hopefully we can uh, open up some cool rares here. And that we did. We actually got a nice two rare pack here. The Grafted Butcher's one that I initially was a little down on, but I've been able to make some good use of him. I mean, worst case scenario, he's a 2-2 two -two that likely is to give at least a couple of the creatures in your deck plus one plus one because there's just so many Phyrexians running around. But we're going to be taking Garuda here for sure. Just such a nasty card. Yeah, it's usually a two for one. Sometimes it's a three for one. It's If nothing else, even if it misses, it's still a six six for six. Super flexible because it can go in any blue or black deck. I mean, if we pick this though... Ideally, we can just move into blue-black, which is my favorite color pair in this uh, format, and Garuda's a great reason to be in it. So we're, we'll take that and hope we can wheel the Butcher, the Agent, maybe even like Invasion for splashing. But we'll start with Garuda and hope we can stick to it. And this pack is just jammed to the brim with amazing stuff. You have Norn's Inquisitor, Captive Weird, Tetsuko can do a lot of great work, the Branch Burner for the Convoke decks, and then three excellent uh, black removal spells, kind of in descending order of goodness. I'm going to take the Deadly Derision here, but would love a Final Flourish and would run a little less happily some Vanquishes in the deck too. But we'll pick up a Deadly Derision and that's just a awesome follow-up to Garuda there. So now we make a decision that's a little tough. Because I could just take the Ifara's Dispersal and just try to lock ourselves into the blue-black route. But man, Imperiosaur is quite the house. And I think I kind of want to pick that up here and speculate on it. I will definitely miss Dispersal if we don't end up in green. But if we do, ooh, Imperiosaur is a good top-end piece for that. Yeah. I mean... Black and blue, there's not a ton of great stuff. Like, Agents is, uh, you know, fine to drop. I would definitely play that, but I think Converter Beast and Cosmic Hunger are both stronger than that. I think we'll take the Cosmic Hunger here. Although, with Garuda, maybe we do want Converter Beast just to have another powerful, even mana-costed thing to do. Comes in as a two-for-one. We're likely to get more removal in black. Uh, that's tricky. I'm going to take... No, let's take the hunger. I think removal is usually going to be the better thing to have. Yeah, green is looking rather open here. I think I'll take the instructor over Renata. Hopefully we're not going to have to be doing the, the plus one counters thing. We'll be able to use two drops to convoke into Imperiosaurs or hit them off of our Garudas. Although I guess we could hit Renata off Garuda too. But we could use some some two drops here. So nothing for either of our colors really, but I will pick up the uh, Thornwood Falls because then maybe we can be a three color deck. I'm definitely open to that, especially being in green. Yep. And now that we see Halo Forger here, we are going to be doing the, the light blue splash at a minimum. And we'll take the Ancient here. Tracker's nice, especially if we can get the, uh, I forget what it is, burgeoning, I think it's called. Eh, we might run a render inert if we end up with uh, enough invasions. Not that we have any quite yet, but. Another ancient, alright. Well, we have got a strong top end to this deck already, so we really just need to fill out the, the early plays and the middle plays, and we'll be pretty great. Ooh, man, I'm not sure what to take out of this pack. Could take Finn. I just, I mentioned the burgeoning before. Burgeoning would be great. Finn's a great two drop. Here's the little plus one counters synergy piece, but Zephyr Singer is really calling to me here. And we are going to be playing uh, blue in our deck, but we really need like a burgeoning or a Kami, you know, some kind of mana fixer if we're going to be trying to do that. But I think Zephyr Singer is just too strong not to pick up here. It's also Convocable, which is relevant. Ooh, and Goreclaw here? 
There's some great two drops and another deadly derision, which are all awesome for me, but considering that we've already got Imperious Sword, Garuda, and two Ancients in the deck, this could be a, a pretty huge synergy piece here. It's going to make our big things cost two less, so they're all going to be four drops instead of five, uh, six drops. You can hit Goreclaw off of the Garuda. Whenever it attacks, it buffs all the rest of those creatures too. This is tough because we really do need some two drops and I would love another uh, derision, but I think I like the Goreclaw here. kind of does exactly what our deck's wanting to do. Now, kind of an unexciting pack, really. I guess we take a Moloch. It's either that or Blade Master. I don't think I care enough about the Blue Splash to do a Temporal Cleansing for removal. Like, I think I want blue to be our splash color. Although maybe black is going to be our splash color. It's hard to say at this point. We'll take a meeting of the minds. That's something I'm happy to splash. Now we can take a Vanquish the Week. And potentially another one here. Or we take the Gargantua. Yeah, that's actually better because of our Gore Claw synergies. Take another Vanquish. Actually, let's take the Informant here. Vanquish would be fine, but... We need our two drops. Another Halo Forager is awesome. Now we got the Burgeoning, that's sweet. We ended up with the Negotiator for a two drop, which we needed. Uh, hopefully we don't have to play any of these. But yeah, we're in a good spot going into the uh, last pack here. So far we're not running either of these Render Inerts. Okie dokie, we have got Collective Nightmare, which is probably going to be the pick. Or we take the Preening Champion or the Agent. I guess Kabu's a consideration too, but I think we need the... We'll take the cheap removal here. We do need to focus in on early drops pretty heavily in this pack, so... if That and removal are going to be our two biggest things. So, speaking of that, I'll take a repurposing first. Although maybe we're supposed to take Wary Thespian or Negotiator here. Because we have so many expensive things already in the deck. Repurposing is just such a good two-for-one. Yeah, I'm going to pick this up. We wheeled a Negotiator last pack, so we should wheel one of them in this one, at least. Uh, yeah, we could take another Meeting of the Minds. Could take a Tidal Terror, too, for fixing. I think I'm just going to take the Informant here, though, actually. Just get another two-drop that we can Convoke with. Now, neither of these are super exciting. I guess Kabu's not either. We don't have anything at the five drop slot though, so I'm gonna take the uh, the Skyline, I believe. Although we don't have that much uh, Phyrexian synergy, so maybe the Sailback's actually better. Gives us access to Artifact and Enchantment Hate, which might be relevant. We might end up cutting that though. Take a Kabu, actually, let's take another Meeting of the Minds. I don't think we need a Kabu. All right, two drop in Dina. Gives us two color options for our uh, Convoke, which is nice. Another beast here. Or I guess we didn't get the first beast, so that's just nice to pick that one up. Take the agent, and hopefully we can wheel one of those two drops. Hey, we got the Wary Thespian. Would like that Vanquish the Week as well, but can't be too picky here. So we missed out on a couple of the, the sweet pieces for this kind of deck, especially the blue-black pieces. The uh, Invasion of Amonkhet, that one would have been the main consideration, but we got some cool synergies going on here, especially with our, our top end. So if we can get to it, I think we'll be in a good spot. We only have to cut five cards. Five. Yeah, I don't think we want to cut any of the two drops, although maybe one. Yeah, we have seven now. I think that's probably still fine, though. Moloch, I could see cutting. That's kind of one of our weaker creatures. Actually, I'm actually going to cut the sail back. Kind of had a feeling that we were going to need to cut that one, because we want as many odd things as we can, so... The only even... Or, rather, we want even things, not odd things. So the only 
odd creatures in this deck are going to be the Halo Foragers. Although, if we cut them, we can cut the Tidal Terror to go a little less on our blue. And maybe we don't do as much of the blue splash as I was thinking, and we just splash these Meeting the Mines and the Zephyr Singer. If we cut all of the blue splash out, what does it look like? We need to add three cards. So we add back the Moloch, the Sailback, and... Uh, we still want even drops if possible. Maybe like Aetherborn. I think I would prefer to have the, the Zephyr Singer meeting of the minds thing going. Maybe we still don't need the Tidal Terror though. Yeah. We got enough big stuff. I like the look of this though. Let's see what our split looks like. 12, 9, and 4. 7, 7, and 4. I think I want one more green. So we'll cut one blue. This can be convoked, this can be convoked. So although we don't have any early things to convoke the blue side of it, so I guess we do still need the blue. We have one burgeoning for helping out with that. Yeah, maybe we do need one extra. And we probably do need to cut the, have it be green because we have so many double black things. We'll see how it works out. I guess the other consideration is running Garuda as a companion. We cut all of our odd cards. We need to add some extras. We don't have a ton to choose from. We lose a fair amount of our uh, removal too. Some of our better pieces of removal. Uh, where was that bad stuff I stuck in? Aetherborn, Wicked Slumber. One more. Ah, the Terror. Yeah, so I think that's how we're going to run it. We will keep... Uh, do we want Gerudo? You know what, let's do Goreclaw. Goreclaw is kind of the, the focus of the deck because we're going to do the big stompy creature things. And we'll see how it goes. I'll catch you all in the first round. Welcome to round number one, y'all. We're on the draw with, I think, a hand we're going to keep because we have all our colors, even if we're down a land. We're on the draw, too, so hopefully we can draw into something. We do need one more blue for our uh, Zephyr Singer. I probably need to cut this, actually. The, the double blue is just too hard. Uh, I think we play the Dina first. Informant's fine, early or late, as long as we don't miss on the making them discard portion. Alright, well I guess we're not going to be able to block that guy. He's going to have double strike now. That's a big problem. That's a real big problem for us. Yeah. I guess we're going to be chumping with a Nazumi Informant here. Right, we need to either... Yeah, I don't even know what we need to do. I'm not even going to attack just in case they remove the Informant. And we need to chump with Dina. But we may have to try and just wait until we get to uh, repurposing. Unless we draw into one of our cheaper removal spells. That's a good one, too. More chump blockers. <laughs> this might be our only life gain in the deck, too. So the, like, teeniest bit of synergy between Dina and the Herbology Instructor coming into play there. That's kind of cool. Even if we're going to get beat down by this rare if we can enjoy the uh, the small things in life I like the life gain synergies all right well that 
is probably the death knell for us right there, considering we missed our land drops and we kind of needed to keep hitting them for the repurposing. Even worse that we just have literally nothing we can play now. I think the the change up needs to be ditching the Zephyr Singer and maybe even the Blue Splash altogether. And just adding some extra lands because we've got so many uh, expensive things in the deck. Yeah, I don't think we can eat eight. Yep, and now we can't play this either. So we're taking ten here. They probably have another equipment or something they can do now. Well, we did draw a land, but it's going to be slightly too late, I think. Yep, they can remove our one creature, and that'll do it. Just couldn't draw the lands. Unfortunate, but sometimes it happens. See you all in the next round. Welcome back. We're here on the play this time. I did go ahead back to the, the deck and I cut our blue splash and I added in an extra green land to the deck. No, actually, I guess it was a black land and once we cut out all the blue. And then we uh, added back in a couple of other creatures to the deck as well. Unfortunately, things like Garuda is not going to be able to hit, but that's all right. First off, we hit a terrible draw and we can't keep that one. This one is better. And we'll ditch one of the forests because our tracker can be our second forest, kinda. But hopefully with this, uh, these changes we can at least play our deck out. I guess we want to play the Moloch at instant speed, don't we? And hope that they cast a black spell. Ah, uh, that's not a black spell. But we can still trade with their negotiator out of nowhere. bit unfortunate to trade down like that, but the 3-3 three three is going to be hard for us to deal with with just Cosmic Hunger for a while. Now we're missing our lands, which is a shame, since we only have our 6 drops and above. Alright, that's a little bit scary, but hopefully we can deal with it before it gets flipped over. We still are one mana short. Ooh, that's not great for us. Although one of the creatures that we added back to the deck is the... Uh, the one that can kill artifacts and enchantments, although I am just now realizing this is a creature. I thought it was a enchantment when it flipped. Slightly better, because at least uh, creatures can be destroyed a little easier. The ward, too, is going to be annoying. Oh, 
Okay, so let's go ahead and jam down Garuda. I think it has the biggest chance to stabilize us here. We could repurpose the Surveyor, but I think I'd rather hold it until we can use it on the, the Dryads. Oh, and we hit some good stuff here. Oh, I forgot to look at our graveyard. I really wanted this Gargantua instead. That's okay. Mistakes were made. Oh, another invasion of Moag. Wow. Well, on the plus side, we can convoke this big boy out now. Which actually will put a counter on the Brawler, which is kind of cool. And I don't think we swing, because we need to be able to block their invasion. Next turn we can probably swing. Wow, man, they just built Render Inert on Invasion of Moag the deck. So they're going to be able to make some big stuff. We're going to need to... Yeah, I guess we can Cosmic Hunger 1 now. Uh, that'll be what we have to do. Yeah, we can inform it plus Hunger. Probably better than just jamming another 6-powered creature down. Ooh, that means their hand is probably filled with gas. Oh, I can't do it on one now. I spent too much mana. Oh, I can. I forgot about this guy. I am sure. Hopefully they don't have protection. Our guy has ward too, so hopefully if they're going to do something, it has to be to one of the other guys. They probably have a cosmic hunger of their own. Ah, final flourish. Okay. At least it's not the Imperiosaur. Now I don't have to pay that cost, though. And we can still swing with the 10 powered guy. Yeah. I don't mind chumping their big guys if they want to swing. And then we can start repurposing things next turn. Like a Gargantua. Hopefully they'll put the counter on the Gargantua here. Trying to spread their threats out a little bit. Excellent. Aw. Vanquish the Weak showing its weakness here. I don't believe there are any of the... Uh, one mana spells that are going to be able to do us in here. But now they've got a bunch of mana, so we'll see what they've got this turn. If they have that multiverse spell, I'm just going to rage a little bit. But they do not. The giant Imperiosaur doing the trick. We probably could have won a turn or two earlier if I had uh, picked a stronger creature from the Garuda, but... Root is just a, a strong card when you get to play it. So, I'll see y'all in the next round. We are back, and we're on the draw here with a pretty reasonable looking hand. Some nice two drops, some removal. Hopefully we can draw one more swamp. You're not a swamp. Opponent has a very aggressive start from the deck, uh, their blue-black deck. Our negotiator will do well on the ground at least, and we may end up nightmaring their uh, aerialist here before they can flip it. Oh yeah, we are definitely going to kill their aerialist now. I was going to hold off, but if they're going to spend... Uh, a wingspan on a flying creature already. We'll just two for one them. Ooh, 
free wheeler. Okay. We do still need that that last swamp, which they it wasn't coming for a while. So <laughs> wow, that was a good top deck. Exactly the removal spell that could hit their free wheeler right there. Next turn we might uh, double these up so that we can hit our second black with that. If we hit our second black naturally, I'm probably just going to kill the, the Strobe Knight. Oh yeah, we're definitely burgeoning now so that we can Garuda next turn. And then we'll swing. I highly doubt they will trade their Strobe Knight into it, but they'll probably sack this guy. Yeah, which is fine. And now that they've got an extra card, I guess I might should have made them discard first before they got to see what they drew. Not sure what the correct play is in that situation. Alright, a familiar, that's not too scary. And a weird, also not that scary, and they're down to one. I feel like we've got some really strong stuff left here. They'll be able to make their token, but... We can kill that strobe knight now, and then we're just kind of hanging tight until we... Uh... Actually, I'm going to hang on to that treasure, I think, just because... Uh... We've got these six costed things we want to make sure we can cast next turn if we don't hit our land. I think that's better than getting a 1-3 down on the board, or flipping a 2-2. Two -two. Yep. It's a good, good trick. Ah, another familiar, okay. And they're out of cards. Well, we hit the land, so... Was wrong to not play our creature last turn, but you never know in the moment like that. But we're going to just slam down Garuda because we have know they have nothing here. And we should hit something. We hit nothing, even though there's only one creature in our entire deck that's not uh, even. And this is it. So that's a bit of a shame. <laughs> I guess we're not swinging yet. Because they just trade a familiar into it. That's still a, a trade up, though. A two drop into a three drop, so maybe that was worth it. Alright, and an agent, that's probably what we'll repurpose now. That way we can make sure our Garuda ends up trading two for one here when they double block. Yep, this all seems fine. Just get their board as teeny tiny as we can. Yeah, we'll take a bit of damage, but... Oh, I clicked too fast. I wanted to play this Herbology Instructor still. That's right, we'll flip a token instead. We'll swing with two and see if they offer the trade. And then next turn we can flip our instructor to kill whatever they play. Yeah, that was a nice one. Still a little of a little bit of a shame we didn't hit anything off the Garuda, considering our whole deck is very likely to hit even stuff, but still a good one. See y'all in that next round. Here we are on the play. Ah, this is a tough one. I think I'm gonna keep this and hope we can draw something, but it's definitely sketchy. I'm keeping it. Hopefully I'll remember to blame myself instead of just complaining if we don't draw into more lands. No, still can't play anything yet, but we did hit a land, so closer to all these six drops. Something we could theoretically cast, but we have nothing to use it with yet. Heart of the Cards... Oh, that's not it. We really need a green next turn. Well, at least they milled stuff that wasn't forests off the top. So hopefully that'll... They'll have helped us out and made our next draw a forest. That would just be ideal. Well, not a forest, but a castable creature. What else can I ask for at this point? 
something to help us convoke out Imperious or Ooh, Rankle and Torbran is going to be hard to deal with for us. I mean, I'm doing this because if they sack their Rankle and Torbran, I'm fine with that. Just make a sack a creature. They gave us a treasure. Um. No. Oh man, I'm so tempted to use this to kill the Rager now. I'm, I think I'm going to still. This is probably very wrong to give away the treasure, but I feel like killing that while we can is worth it. Because Rankle and Torbrand is just going to do a number on us either way here. And now we at least have a sacrificial lamb if they choose to do the sacrifice thing. Which means ideally we'll just keep making the... getting a treasure each turn. I mean, if we're going to be taking three damage, at least we're getting paid for it. Oh, they can choose none. Didn't realize that. Okay, well now we just lose. Because that's Shieldred, and Shieldred is Shieldred. Yep, we sack one. Well, at least we're getting sacrificial fodder, but we would have had to be able to immediately repurpose her for this to be salvageable. So, I mean, we're going to lose to the the Shieldred, Rankle, and Torbran combo, which... Yeah, I mean... I said I wasn't going to complain about the cards. And we didn't draw our land, so there's still definitely my fault to be, you know, blamed here, but... At this point, Moloch's not doing us anything. But these would have been very difficult to overcome circumstances either way. And then they followed up with Invasion of Amonkhet, which is, like, just a nasty, busted, nuts card, too. Oh, she has Swamp Walk, even. Wow. Didn't realize that. So, she's just largely unbeatable until we have hard removal for her. I'm going to go ahead and just call this one here. I'm not going to try and mess around with that while we still can't cast any cards in our hand. We'll just jump right on into the next round, and I'll see y'all there. We are back, and we're on the draw this game, which this one actually looks like one of our, our better starting hands here. A 2-drop that disrupts them, a 3-drop that ramps us. Kind of what this deck wants to be doing. We can actually cast all the spells in our hand. With what we have in our hand. A shocking uh, thing for us sometimes. Made them ditch a Valduk, so hopefully their whole deck was built around Valduk and that just means they had two in their hand. Zerda, huh? Not the scariest of companions. We are going to eat a fair bit of damage here for a minute, but I think it's still worth the, the ramping up. And we can chump with our informant if worse comes to worse. Next turn we can derision the Zerda if we need to. Eh, or we might derision that. If we draw into our big Convoke guy, we're going to want the Informant around still, so I am going to take this damage this turn. Hmm. We can Derision plus hold up Hunger, but we have really nothing we're hungering anyways. Derision and Herbology Instructor... I think it's Derision and Flip at this point, because I'd rather just hold the Derision up during their turn here. If they choose to spend their turn flipping their Seraph, that would be good. Okay, Skywarden. Let's so see, yeah, I will kill probably Zerda. Oh, they're not going to swing with Zerda. Yeah, okay, we'll kill the Seraph then. And then flip our token. Oh, 
Well, that was a nice two for one. The. Oh! That's a thing. Zerta reduces the cost of the furnace gremlin. Well, I did that calculation wrong. So not a two for one, but it's still worth it, I think. And now we'll just jam down a big old trampling, reaching creature that these can't get past. I mean, they're, they've are they been hurting on, on lands here, so I'm guessing they don't have the craziest stuff in their hand, hopefully. They haven't removed our informant. So I'm hoping that means they don't have removal for the Ancient too, And then next turn we can hunger away something. Hmm. Yeah, if they're going to try and just race us, I think we're, we're going to be fine. Because, yeah, we can kill the Zerda now. Swing with this guy. And both of these we can use for the, the little cheeky life gain synergy trick next turn, so we'll probably Moloch during their turn to... Oh. So we can't outrace them. And that's a super, super scary card that I wish I had removal for. So that's six damage we're going to be eating in the air, right? Oh, it's just first strike, not double strike. I think I still want to trade this off. Boy, howdy, is a Boonbringer Valkyrie scary, though. At least next turn we can flip our Instructor to kill something. We're going to have to hold our Ancient back on blocks here. Can't be letting that Valkyrie through. And if they have removal for it, we're in really bad shape. I can't remember if I got it on video or not, but I was able to draft a deck one time that had three Boonbringer Valkyries in it, which was, it was just nasty because you could just drop one, they'd spend everything that they had to remove it, you'd drop a second one and then they'd like instantly concede, or if they didn't and they managed to get rid of that one, then you dropped the third one and they were just, you know, brutalized at that point. This is a shame. Losing out on our reach, guys. Yeah. If we don't top deck into some removal here, we're going down. And we just keep hitting the, the lands. So we'll have, what, two more turns? Three more turns? But I mean, even if we swing out like we just did, they're we're only taking they're they're basically taking one a turn. They're getting four back each turn. Alright. Last turn. We either draw removal for Boonbringer or we die. Can we heart of the cards? Do we already use our repurposing? We did not. Come on, merciless repurposing. And we just continue to draw lands. So that's a shame. It's one of those ways we always seem to to lose to. But at least it wasn't because I mulliganed terribly. But let's take one last look at this deck that I am certain would have done a lot better than it ended up doing. Got to play the Imperosaur once, and when we did, it dominated. Garuda, even when I mistakenly chose the wrong creatures, still did a fantastic job. The Ancients are fine. You know, they're just good roll fillers, and with Goreclaw in the deck, they felt like nice inclusions. Gargantua is just a fine card. Repurposing is always awesome. Derision, I wish we would have picked up one or two of the uh, other copies we saw floating around. Never got to play our Converter Beast. Moloch being the one, look, it's the one odd creature. None of the rest of our three drops or one drops are creatures. Even the token that comes out of this is, is even. And yet we saw that one odd creature when we did a Garuda. 
and it seemed to come up uh, an abnormally large amount of time during our matches, considering there's only one of this, and there's, you know, a lot of other stuff. Didn't see our wary thespian a single time. Don't know that I saw the negotiator once. Yeah, we saw our instructor and our Dina and our tracker a lot and our informants even more. I guess we did have two of those. Don't know that we saw Nightmare. Maybe once. Just never saw Goreclaw and I built the deck around Goreclaw. Don't think we even drew Goreclaw, which is a little bit of a sad time there. But yeah, overall, I think this deck had a lot more potential. It just kind of had some odd situations, some bad mulls, some bad draws, a couple of misplays, and yeah. Overall, still a really cool deck, especially with the, some of these rares we ended up getting. But I appreciate you all coming along on the ride with me here today, and I'll see you all in that next video. Take care, everybody.